Hey, welcome to episode three of Game Relics. Now we have been putting a ton of work into Fireball Island and I am ecstatic with the results, but I feel like we're ignoring perhaps the most important part of the board game, the keystone, if you will, and that is of course, Volcar. Um, this episode, we are going to take Volcar and turn him into something that fits well with the redesign board. Now this might be controversial, I realize that. Some people really love Volcar. I don't, I just think he looks like a, a werewolf or something, I don't know. We're gonna, we're gonna give him a little bit of facelift. So here is the original Volcar that came with the board game, and it's a curious design. I don't know what the goal was with this. I mean, I picture he's supposed to be part of this volcanic mountain, but this has got horns, it's got lips. It, it's, it's a strange, strange creation. I hit my sketchbook with the goal of coming up with a design that was both scary and also looked like it belonged on this mountainside. I originally was thinking that it was a natural feature, part of uh, like an actual lava flow with like a collapsed lava tube that made up a face shape. But I, uh, I, just, I just was really kind of struggling with it. Uh, so I scratched that idea and hopped on my iPad uh, and did some sketching overlaying the images on some actual photos of the game piece for proper size reference. I finally settled on the idea that there was a volcanic spire here that the natives of the islands built into a temple for worship because it would constantly spit out these fireballs so they made it into an evil deity. I then printed them out at 1-1 one, one scale and took it to the studio. It is Friday morning, and as usual, we are in between pouring slip. I have a little bit of time to kill, only about 10 minutes. Uh, but I've been tinkering this morning, um, getting a little bit of Volcar time in, and I wanted to get you up to speed as to where we are. The big news is we have reached just about the bottom of the barrel on the freeform air. Um, I have almost no of the B, none of the B component left, and just a little bit of the A. Um, it's because you mix it by, you know, eyeballing it, so they weren't exactly perfect 50-50 mixes. Anyways, this is almost done. So for the Volcar Resculpt, I'm going to switch over to this stuff. Um, Freeform Sculpt. It is also a, uh, like, one-to-one -one ratio, um, kneadable sculpting epoxy. Uh, but it supposedly holds much more detail. I have never used it. In the past, I used to use, um, I think it was called Apoxy. Uh, I used that a long time ago, like many, 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 many years ago. And it was a great thing. And I'm hoping that this will compare. Um, yeah, so that's what we're going to do. I've got my design all drawn up. And I'm going to move forward on this guy. The steps that we're going to do is I'm going to glue. So this is three, three pieces. Ah. Ah these two half pieces that are just kind of pressed fit together and then this bottom piece. I'm going to glue these together uh, with a styrene glue so that they're one piece and then I'm going to mark out the sections that I want to keep. I'm going to use this kind of as an armature for sculpting the new piece and uh, I'm going to mark it out. We're going to sand it down so that the epoxy will stick and then we're going to hit it with the rotary tool. At least that's the plan. I welded the two parts together with a plastic welding compound. It's like this solvent glue that actually melts the plastic together. It's, it's strong, it's great, it's, it's good stuff. I then went on to cut out my 1-1 one, one scale rendering of the plan for the new improved Volcar. Uh, I cut them out because uh, it makes it easy you know, to hold up next to my sculpture. I can check my scale, I can check my symmetry. It's just a handy little guide to have as you work. From there, it was time to then sand down all of the existing Volcar plastic so that the epoxy would have something to really get a mechanical bond on. So this is where we get serious. There's a lot on the original Volcar that just doesn't belong, and I'm going to now go through and cut away all the extra plastic. I want to make sure that this fits the profile of the new design, and to do that, I've got to get a lot of this extra stuff out of the way. And as you can see, we're pretty committed now. There's no turning back. Uh, this vintage Volcar is definitely going to become something different. 
Okay, I've got the profile in a good spot. I'm happy with where it's going so far, looking really good. And um, I'm gonna get now to the point where I'm going to take my little scale paper cutout, plot out exactly where the eye sockets are gonna go and where the mouth is gonna be, and I'm gonna cut that away. Now, a couple things that I also have to keep in mind before I start putting epoxy clay onto this is the wiring. I wanna get the lighting up in here. I wanna get the wiring set inside of this guy. And I've always gotta be conscious of the marble action. I don't wanna inhibit gameplay in any way. I want it to you know, work like it's supposed to. Um, I do think I'm gonna modify this lower section just a little bit um, to match better the drawing that I have um, and to give a better channel for the marble. Right now the marble, sometimes when it comes down, It'll, it'll hit a tooth, so I want to give it a, a clear trough to shoot out through. At least that's the plan. Did I say wiring? I did! Let's back up a little bit and take a look at this handy dandy little on and off switch from Adafruit that just so happens to fit perfectly in the bottom of the Volcar game piece. Now, this little circuit has an on and off switch, room for a lithium cell battery, and I've got this flickering LED light that has a transistor built into it so it will flicker like a candle when it gets power. Wait for it. Dun da da! Amazing! Remember my paper template? Here it is in action. I use it to set up my eye holes to figure out how big the mouth is going to be, and then I plot it all out with this paint pen before I attack Volcar with my rotary tool. All right, well, a lot more came out than I expected, especially here on the, the front part around the eyes. And I, I did panic. There was a moment of panic, but I think it's okay. Um, overall, it's looking great. Uh, so I've got tons of room in here to put the LED. I've got lots. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be it's gonna be okay. It looks horrible. As usual, things look horrible while you're working on them, but I, uh, I'm excited about this. Now, before I go any further, before I, I, I'm thinking maybe I wanna remove a little more on the sides, I don't know. I wanna see how it looks with the light in it. I also think that I'm going to glue this thing together into one piece before I start putting the epoxy in here, just so it's a little more sturdy. Uh, but before I do that, we've gotta get onto the wiring. Um, because I don't want to try to do that after I pack this thing full of epoxy. So let's start soldering. Little change of plans. So I was cleaning up after shooting the last segment. Of course, as soon as the camera's away, I make a big decision and I kind of just cut away the entire face of Volcar. Um, I just wasn't happy with the profile. I didn't feel like I was going to be able to get enough room to really get a good kind of um, skull sculpture out of it. So I just took it all the way. And also this is gonna give me a lot more room to get in there and get the LED placed up high. I wanna place the LED really high, like way up here. Um, at least that's the goal. Um, so that's what happened. Um, yeah, so it's, it's late in the day, time to go shopping for dinner. And I am going to get back onto this tomorrow It'll be Sunday. I should have some time to really sink into Volcar and um, we'll get this thing wired and I really want to start sculpting on it. Okay, no, no more big changes today, I promise. Now, I know we were going to just focus on Volcar for this episode, but we couldn't abandon the island entirely. So I am doing a little bit of fun stuff on the island as well. And the biggest project I want to tackle is the bridges, the bridge section. Um, I didn't fill this in entirely. I kind of messed it up. So I need to rebuild it. And I'm also rethinking the way the marble comes down from the uh, from Volcar up here and, and to run down the, the little stream section. Let's dive deep into this. So on our board, you can see the bridge sections go here and then also here. And this is the big critical failure area. I didn't build this up properly, and even where the fireball sits isn't isn't quite right. And it really becomes apparent when we look at the actual game board over here. You can see there's a definite step here where the bridge will connect. This is where the bridge goes, something like something like this. And then there's another bridge here. Whoop. Well, there. So we need to be able to get this bridge sitting somehow over here. 
That's challenge one. And this is challenge number two. Ugh, horrible. We want the marble to come out of Velcar's mouth and snake around here at maximum velocity to knock out this bridge section. But right now all the kinetic energy is getting sucked up right there. Ugh. Gotta fix that. You can see I've already started working on my planned solution to this. I've carved out a deeper trench run in the base of the riverbed here. In fact, I carved it a little too far. I went through the board there. I gotta fix that. And then I'm gonna build up a little bit of this side wall here. So I'll be able to, wait, let me pan up. This fireball will still be able to drop down and roll out this way, but I'm gonna, I am going wanna put an embankment here so that the fireball will curve this way and this one will curve that way. That's what we're gonna do. That's, that's what the goal is for today. To build up the river embankment, we're using our trusty freeform air. In fact, this is just about the last of the freeform air we have in the buckets. I'm also going to build up the cave there, cave number five. I want to make it a little more cave-like, so I'm putting a little cardboard armature in there and then building up some better cave walls. And finally, we get to the bridge section, the part that was freaking me out the most. Uh, this is a little tricky to make sure that everything was the proper height and the proper size for the plastic bridges to sit in properly. All right, it's the next morning. We just poured some slip and I am ready to see if my little river rerouting project worked. Success! And not only does the new riverbed work great, the bridges fit perfectly and they also work perfectly when the fireballs strike into them. So good. All right, back to wiring. If you are looking for an electronics amateur, you found one. I am horrible at soldering and attaching wires, so we're just gonna zip through this really quick so you cannot focus too much on my mistakes. Basically, we are just snaking the wiring through the bottom of Volcar, up through the LED on top, and then once we verify that the light still works, it does. We then solder the bottom components on, which is the switch, the on and off switch, and then that on and off switch gets hot glued deep into the recesses at the base of Volcar, where it will not interfere with gameplay at all. Okay, well, check it out. It works. Woo! -hoo! So we've got an illuminated Volcar skeleton. Let's just call this the skeleton. Um, yeah, I think that we are ready to start plotting out some, some actual sculpting. I can't wait. Um, <laughs> it's taken a while to get here. Definitely ended up modifying this a lot more than I thought I would, um, but I'm happy with it. As you can see, I've got the electronics here in the bottom. Um, I made sure I got them in there flush so that it wouldn't interfere with, you know, gameplay. It still will rotate. Yeah. Let's go! You know how much I love armatures, so we couldn't start sculpting the face of this new Volcar without making an armature for it. Using that paper template, I have this thick sheet of styrene, it's a type of plastic, that I cut into the, you know, the rough shape of the skull that I want to be putting on the front of this idol, sanded it up, and then I got it hot with a heat gun here and melted it to fit the curve for the face. Okay, everybody, it's happening. I'm actually sculpting with the freeform sculpt. Now you can see I've mixed up like a big wad of it. I've got it on the table and I am using these little dental tools, metal dental tools to kind of pack it in and shape it as I go along. Now this has like an hour and a half of working time, but let me tell you, it is not quite what I expected it to be like. Uh, here is where I was at at the end of the day. Yeah. Okay, so that was a bit of a disaster. Um, the epoxy putty, um, the freeform sculpt, it is like bubble gum. I mean, I thought, I, I didn't know what to expect. It was not like the freeform air. It, it was really, really soft and it stayed soft for a long time. So, I mean, this ended up looking kind of like a bunch of pillows in here. So I'm gonna go through and spend the next half hour with some uh, scraping tools and try to get this to look a little more like what I wanted it to look like before I do the outside face. So, um, I mean, it's, it's salvageable. We're gonna save it, we're gonna save it, but it's gonna take some work.
So the goal here is with these dental tools and some sandpaper is to kind of just tighten up these details, get these things looking more like stone blocks instead of soft bubblegum pillows. All right, it is the next day and I'm feeling positive. It's time to sculpt the face of the new Volcar. In anticipation of the soft bubblegum clay, I've gone ahead and mixed up a batch and let it sit for 45 minutes to kind of firm it up. And also, I have done a little bit more work on the armature. You can see I put a little party hat on this guy just to make it look a little more like a volcanic spire like it is in the drawing. All right, let's start putting this clay on. So I let this stuff set up for, uh, I guess, 45 minutes. I mixed it and, and it went from bubblegum to cement super fast. Um, yeah, uh, it's, it's not my favorite thing to sculpt with, but we're getting there. We're getting there. Um, I'm going for like the, I want to get some nice asymmetry. I'll be definitely filing down this party hat to make it a little less party hat um, as we go. But it's coming together. But oh my God, this stuff is uh, it's challenging. It's challenging. It's, it's getting even more firm. Um, but I'm able to, to get some details in. I'm, I'm liking it. I'm liking it. Um, right now we're working on the, uh, the stone blocks. I'm trying to give it some, some really like massive and yet very intricate blocks of stone to help give it a sense of scale. Um, <laughs> looking at it in the camera, it looks extremely boogity. Um, ooh. All right, I got to keep working on this thing. Holy moly. Okay, we're going to call it here. It's not exactly like the drawing, but the drawing was a concept, so we didn't have to stick to it exactly. Um, I do like it. We're going to hit it with some sandpaper tomorrow morning once things firm up in our less cement bubble gummy. And um, yeah, we're going we're gonna to sand it. We'll maybe scribe some better detail in there. Uh, and then we will hit it with some primer and it should look pretty cool. I'm happy with it. It's got a great uh, like jade Mayan death mask feel. Um, I definitely think it looks a lot scarier than the original weird wolfman uh, French terrier kind of concept they had going. Um, yeah, but it definitely needs some sanding. I got to refine these planes a little better, but it's just, it's just uh, ridiculously sticky and um, well... It will only stick to things you don't want it to stick to. And it's just too, it's too weird. It's a weird substance right now. So I'm going to let it firm up completely and, and hit it with some tools. Anyway, ball car. All right, it's the next day. It's firmed up quite a bit. I can handle it without, uh, you know, it being a sticky mess. And I am ready to go in and tighten up this detail. Let's hit it. So my goal here, now that this stuff is no longer sticky bubblegum, is to refine the symmetry and just get these planes nice and smooth. I want these to be giant blocks of stone that were carved out of and, and built onto this existing uh, volcanic spire. Um, so yeah, I just want to get it nice and smooth and refined, things that were impossible to do when this was sticking to everything that touched it. Here's a look at the filing. You can see the filed side much smoother, much more refined, and the original rough sculpture. Yeah, already big improvement. Super happy with that. Um, I love my little jeweler's file. It is an incredible tool. I have two of them. I keep one here by the workbench all the time, and then I have another one stashed away in my toolkit. Um, so really quick, why did I go with this clay? Well, two things. One, I feel like I've been saying a lot of negative things about the sculpting epoxy. There's nothing wrong with it as a sculpting medium. I know tons of artists that do incredible work using this exact clay. Uh, I'm just not used to it. And so, you know, it takes a bit of learning to figure out. And also it is cool what you can do with it once it's set. Now, why did I go with this? I mean, if I had used clay that I'm used to using all the time, like, you know, the monster clay or an oil-based clay, I would have had to sculpt it and I would have gotten it exactly like my drawing, but then I'd have to make a mold of it and then cast it in something else. Lots of steps. And I, since I only wanted one object, that was just too much material for, you know, the end result of one thing. Whereas if I use the epoxy clay, 
what I sculpt is what I get. It's rock hard when it's done and I can use this for gameplay and it's perfect. So that's why I opted for the epoxy clay. Um, yeah, and, and it's, it's gonna work out fine. It just takes a bit of patience and a bit of trust that will come out okay in the end. Just hit it with primer. The magic of primer. Oh, so, so excited. Ah, oh, he turned out great. So great. Mm. Let's take it for a test drive. Oh man, just look at that flickering light. Ah, I am so happy with the way this turned out. Is it perfect? No. Can you still see the seam lines? Yeah. And there's file marks and all that nonsense. But you know what? My old boss and mentor would always say, done is best. And I have to agree. This is supposed to be a fun project. And I want to be able to play this game someday. So, you know, I got to kind of finish it. Here is the old Volcar and the new improved Volcar side by side, so you can see all the differences. Um, like I said, overall, I think that the one on the right looks like a proper volcanic idol. The one on the left, not so much. The new Volcar really shines when you put it on the board. I mean, look at that. That is a terrifying volcanic idol. It's guarding the jewel. Do you want to take the jewel? I don't know. He's pretty scary. Super stoked. Now, I think we're gonna call it here for this episode of Game Relics, but we still have a lot of work to do. So let's quickly dive into the stuff I wanna tackle next. And um, yeah, cause there's a lot of it. Okay, first up, the bridges, they look great. And I wanna fix a little issue that I have with the dock section. Now, when you finish the game, you wanna land here at the end of the dock and I don't think it looks good enough. I think it's too close to where you end up as a player down here when you get washed down the river. So I've done two things. One, I moved this step. It used to be over here, which I thought was right next to the boat. I was just like, why can't you just hop onto the boat? And I moved it to here. And the next thing I want to do is I'm actually going to cut out the dock and I'm going to replace it with a little model boat that I bought. Um, yeah, so that I want it to, to definitely look like you can't just jump from there onto the boat. It's just... It just looks too close to me. So that's one thing we got to tackle. I started to go nuts on the ancient temple here on this corner of the island, scribing in a lot of neat old stone detail. I want to continue working on that, uh, getting it looking even spiffier. Once the smoke clears and I can go back outside, I definitely can't wait to hop on that. We've also got to tackle the inside of the crater here. I've got a neat hole here. I want to put a second hole over here so this this guy will actually walk across kind of a stone catwalk to get to the cave. I think that would be pretty cool. Uh, and I, I, we got to get some neat sloped walls in here. I want to figure out what the base is going to be. I think I'd like to do some more lighting effects in there. Got to do that. Of course, we got to fill in all these little broken areas. And overall, I want to go in and I think I am going to scribe in all of these stone outlines with my rotary tool so that when I paint this, uh, the paint will sit in there and it'll look really nice like an actual like stone flagstones. That's the goal. So anyway, that's kind of the main things I want to tackle for the next one. Basically, I want to get this board ready for paint so that we can get it looking as cool as possible and start playing it. So yeah, lots to do, but it's, it's, uh, it's coming along and I can't believe how far we've gotten on the board. So good. I cannot wait to play. Oh, I can't wait. See you next episode.